Bonjour, guten tag, aloha. Welcome today to the Asia Europe People's Forum for a Just, Peaceful and Sustainable World. We're here on the closing afternoon and today we'll be having an amazing panel of advocates, activists and analysts focusing on the effects of different interpretations of the rule of law and human rights, citing the example of what's taking place in the Lao People's Republic. I'm Joshua Cooper. I'm the executive director of the Hawaii Institute for Human Rights. And it's an honor to welcome you today to this important event. Hawaii Institute for Human Rights and the Alliance for Democracy in Laos have partnered for many years to make sure that the voice of directly impacted peoples and human rights defenders is heard in the halls of decision-making in ASEAN, in the EU, in the United Nations, wherever it's possible for the voice of defenders of democracy to be able to speak to the, to the world. It's been an honor to partner with the Alliance for Democracy in Laos to bring the people in the diaspora, but also what's an honor to work with the Alliance for Democracy in Laos is because they reach inside Laos and are able to get the information directly from the communities, directly from the capital, to make sure that the world is aware of what is truly happening on the ground. So we're fortunate to be able to have an amazing list of speakers, as well as having folks share exactly what's happening inside Laos with you today. I now would like to hand it over to my co-host, Marcos Visa, and he will share with you and summarize who will be taking place and introduce our first speaker today. Thank you again for joining us at the AEPF. Yes, hello ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Wiese. I'm the office manager of the Alliance for Democracy in Laos. Why we are here today? We are here today to use example to examine the different legal cultures between Europe and some countries in Asia. We have chosen to the People's Republic of Laos as an example, not only because we work as an NGO for Laos, but also because here in particular, the differences to the countries in Europe are very strong. Most of the Europeans know little about Laos and uh, some politicians consider it unimportant. But Laos is anything but an unimportant country. Laos is a key country for those who want to expand their influence in Southeast Asia. Laos is also one of the most important raw material suppliers in the region on Southeast Asia Point. Laos has achieved, not only in the past, as one of the largest intoxicant drug producers in the world and, and a historical key country in the Indochina War and the Vietnam War. The Ho Chi Minh Trail was in Laos. But today, we will only not only address the problems, we will also show how things can go better because you, ladies and gentlemen, will also have the opportunity to discuss the topic further or perhaps even to develop it further. Now I have the honor to introduce you the first speaker, Dr. Bunton Chantalabong Wiese. She is the uh, president of the Alliance for Democracy in Laos and she is one of the founder of uh, the biggest Lao NGO in the world. Dr. Bunton. Thank you, Marcus. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bunton Chantalabong Visa. I am the president of the Alliance for Democracy in Laos. The Alliance for Democracy in Laos, ADL, is a global network organization promoting a peaceful chain for genuine democracy in Laos. It is a non-profit organization. ADL has obtained evidence directly from the Laotian population. I would like to speak about rule of law, differences between laws and constitution, lack of implementation 
of important laws in Laos. The references to the European standard. Dear Sir Omadan, the differences between the European legal standard and the Laosian legal standard are very large, which is often underestimated by many people. I will show you of some, this one. Let's start with the difference between the different alliance system. Each which most European countries are on the one hand and the alliance system in which Laos is on the other. First, there is the European Union in which most of the European countries are located and in Southeast Asia, it is the ASEAN organization. Why the EU is a community of values with common values such as understanding democracy and the rule of law. ASEAN is more of an economic gathering. The EU as a community of values does interfere with human rights violation in the internal affair of the independent member states. ASEAN states do not do this. Nevertheless, you will find in our lecture series today that, uh, that there are some strange contradictions here in particular. Again and again, there are contradictions in legislation in the Lao People's Republic. On the one hand, general rights are guaranteed in the constitution on the other hand, they are in turn reserved with laws and decrees. On truth, the constitution guarantees freedom of speech, freedom of the media, freedom of assembly, and freedom of association in Article 44. This does not exist in reality. Many laws and decrees do away with the right guaranteed in the constitution. There are also major differences in the world of parliament and the implementation of law by the government. The population is hindered in the exercise of their human rights. Civil rights activists, but also simple inhabitants of the countries disappear or are impressed when they stand up for their rights. The freedom of expression, especially freedom of the press, is suppressed by the regime. A disturbing development is the current crackdown on the internet or social media. The second, the second cycle of the UPR recommended that the Lao PPR take measures to ensure that on the legislation on the press and media, including digital media, is solely aligned with its international human rights obligation. Even before it responded to those recommendations, the Lao government went ahead and passed new decree. Since the decree number 327 and other has been in effect, it is hardly impossible to criticize the government or party. Every critique now is a decriticization of the system, so dissidents are sentenced up to 20 years in prison. The institutions in Laos are a guild 
the principle and spirit of the Convention on Political Rights. According to the Laos Constitution in Article 3, the Lao Revolutionary People's Party has the core leadership across the country. But it is impossible for other organizations to work and exit. The same applying to other th thinkers. It can be observed that the arrest of politically different thinking over long periods of time are ancient. Decision of Laos barely dare to stand up for their rights. As a result, the rule of law of the country is in danger. Decree number 288, 238 prevent the work of NGOs in Laos. But the fact is that neither human rights organization nor political NGOs are allowed in Laos. Worst, regime critics are treated like criminals. The punishment for regime critics in Laos are about as high as those for terrorists in Europe. For simple criticism on social media, three blockers were sentenced to 12, 18, and 20 years in 2016. As already mentioned, Article 3 in the Laos Constitution guarantees the ruling power of the Communist Party on all levels. Such the party has access to all institutions in the country. Unlike in most European countries, neither the legislature nor the executive or the judiciaries are independent of each other. All of this creates great uncertainty for investors from Europe and it's also complicated the relationship between Laos and Europe. In equality disturbing development is the firstly different enforcement of laws in Laos, for example, there are very strict laws against corruption, drug-related crime, and other criminal offenses, and that the authorities are unable to control the crime. However, if someone criticizes the regime or state institution, one is very much in a position to arrest or punish those effects. But there too, the Laos people, the public does not follow international standards. Why in the country of Europe, the accused have the right to a lawyer or are free to choose him? In Laos, are uh, accused are convicted without the possibility of firing event the government representative of Laos were approached by us and the representative of the UN after their under ceremony. Development during the ICCPR meeting in 2018, the government representative tried to talk themselves out of the fact that Laos was a poor country and needed more money to implement it. Nevertheless, the representative of Laos insisted on calling our organization terrorists. We have even been equated with ISIS. Of course, the UN representative did not take this seriously because Otherwise, we would not be constantly asked an advisor by the UN. 
withdraw my league and uncertainly, it is on to logo that investors from Europe are very rare. My subsequent speaker will explain that other consequences will arise from this and what effect we, this will have on all of us. Thank you for your attention. I give to just right now. Thank you so much, Buntong. We appreciate very much your opening statement in describing the important work of ADL at the United Nations, but also juxtaposing this journey for justice that the people inside ASEAN compared to the people organizing inside the European Union and the Council of Europe have a much more difficult task of being able to actually exercise their fundamental freedoms that are enshrined in the global standards that's in the UN human rights machinery, and also pointing out often that many times the legislation that's adopted inside Laos might have a title, but that is where the real standards of societal equality, that there might be a equality, equity, or democracy, but in, I'd like to introduce a great colleague named Peng Saksidi, and he will share the differences in international law between Laos and Europe and the attachment of Laos to other states compared to the European states, as well as addressing the phenomena of the Vietnamization of Laos. Peng, we hand it to you now in Canberra. Okay, thank you. Give, uh, Marcus, give me a pause, please. Thank you, Dr. Joshua Cooper, for having me. Thank you, the Asia European People's Forum for Just, Peaceful, and Sustainable World. I'll talk about uh, contradictions and inequalities. The on the one hand, the ASEAN countries are not allowed to interfere in the internal affairs of another state. On the other hand, this is exactly the case in Laos, namely through two dominant power of Vietnam and China. Vietnam, the Iron Lao Vietnamese Treaty of Friendship, July 18, 1977, one sided affairs, no good for Laos. Vietnamese technical advisors to monitor and direct on activities of Lao officials. Vietnamese troops in and out of uniform to station in all provinces violations of international law. The one-sided bilateral Vietnam-Laos cooperation since 1980 to turn valuable natural resources to capital to capital benefit nothing to Laos. Education and the Lao culture are destroyed, forcing the young population to be brainwashed with Ho Chi Minh monuments in many cities all over Laos. Buddha statues are taken or stolen from temples all over Laos with the latest incident on January 9th 2015 at the old Wat Ong Tu temple. Vietnamese nationals to occupy permanently to 15 kilometers inside Laos at provinces bordering Vietnam. Security and drug trade, human trafficking, and many other illegal activities at these borders are undetected. Many Lao population are prone to be involved in these undesirable activities and many young people are involved, leaving them with undesirable or no future as if freedom of speech, freedom of expression and freedom of assembly to be shut. Genocide and ethnic cleansing, including the capture of the king and Queen of Laos through concentration camps 
after the seizure of power by the Communist Party of Lao on 2nd December 1975. The confiscation of Lao land in the west of up to 30 kilometers at the border of Xiangquang province. Many villages in the southern provinces have been expropriated and the villagers are forced to speak Vietnamese. This is tormented for the heart and soul of all Laotian. Over the years, this treaty has provided le legalistic cover and control for Vietnam before the world community. It is in fact a cloak for Vietnam's still gradual control of Laos, starting with the military and political apparatus. It legitimized the stationing of Vietnamese army troops in Laos to protect it against hostile or counter-revolutionary neighbors. The situation remains the same today despite four decades of stability. The only difference is that the Vietnamese soldiers are out of uniforms and act as advisors. In Europe, there is the European Court of Justice, which decides on disputes between countries independently. In Europe, two legal lines have been corrected since the Second World War, but this has always happened peacefully by mutual agreement because there are open borders in Europe. So these borders no longer play a major role for most countries. For example, the German minority in Eastern France does not care whether they belong to France or to Germany. Nobody has to be afraid to state oppression. As of now, the Vietnamization of Laos is on a new level. Now Vietnamese becomes the most important foreign language in the Laos school. Pupils who study Vietnamese instead of other la foreign languages are absolutely preferred in some schools. National symbols are replaced by Vietnamese symbol. For, for instance, the Lao Champa at the top of the Tat Luong Stupa is now replaced by a Vietnamese lotus. Ho Chi Minh statues are erected in a big number in villages and cities, but nothing causes more alarm than the establishment of special zone on many Lao provinces bordering Vietnam, where Vietnamese nationals are allowed to settle and occupy permanently 15 kilometers in, inside Laos. Significantly, significantly, the borderline has effectively been pushed back into Laos by 15 kilometers, and the once Lao town and villages became Vietnamese as reported by Radio Free Asia. China, 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 world power domination, one bell, one road, or the Silk Road Initiative, that trap diplomacy, South China Sea, the East China Sea, Hong Kong, Taiwan, including Australia. With China, everything is a tit for tat. The bilateral Lao-China cooperation started since 1993 after the Sino-Vietnamese conflict from 1979 to 1991, which both countries claiming victory. Land lease acquisition of 99 years in Laos. Bo Ten Viang Chan of 414 kilometers railway of more than 6.8 billion deaths to Laos. Special economic zone for plantations, cities and towns which belong to China. Battery for Asia, dams project to 100 dams to be built. It is covered by corruptive officials. It is already showing damages to ecological system, including depletion of wildlife, soil erosion, vulnerability to floods, and loss of soil nutrients for agriculture, leaving the ugly scars of the pristine beauty of Laos landscape, which can never be replaced. 
by polluting the water and interfering with the fish migration, the giant hydroelectric dams have begun to affect watershed, farming the fish stock, the food supply, and livelihood of not just Laosian, but other re riparian people on the Mekong and other tributary rivers. The ex exploitation of min uh, minerals and other raw materials are also poisoning the land and water for lack of adequate monitoring and controls. These lucrative activities do not benefit the people, but only the foreign investors and those political rulers and other corruptive government officials. Corruptions in Laopedia government exist at every level of the political and administrative system from the central to local government, focusing on development projects that would benefit the personal wealth of the decision makers, taking the fund away from projects which would generate employment and in income for the people. Worst of all, Laotians are being extorted by government workers, big and small, which we hear every day on social media. Nothing sustainable with the Laopedia infrastructure project. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, Peng. We appreciate your perspective sharing from down under in Australia, the, the current situation of how you see the Belt Road Initiative and what's happening inside Southeast Asia, as well as extending all the way to Australia. Unfortunately, it's a long history. Actually, on this day, on May 23rd in 1951, China formally annexed Tibet as an autonomous region and gave rise to the Tibetan independence movement that's led by uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the 1989 Nobel Peace Prize recipient. And it still continues today, of course, with the Tibetan parliament in exile in Dharamsala, India. So it is a trend that has extended for too long but we're very excited that at the HP for a just, peaceful, and sustainable world, we're able to begin to share what's going on in the world and the way that we can move forward. I now believe Marcos has a video that we could share before we introduce our next speaker. That highlights some of the examples of what's taking place inside Laos today and connects with the situation uh, reported by CNN of how uh, even in this times of COVID, unfortunately, there's pursuit of wealth over the, the real health of the people and how these corporations as well as uh, influential nations are trying to just pursue profit instead of thinking of the planet and also the people of Laos. I will now introduce though Bonhom Chanta, who will talk about the effects of rule of law in Laos, looking at corruption, uh, the major drug challenges that are being used to then look at profit instead of considering the problems that are happening to the people, prostitution, as well as human trafficking. We'll explore really how the right to education and health is ignored, unfortunately, inside Laos and then implemented in Europe. Bonhomme. Okay. Hello, Dr. Cooper. And thank you for giving me the speaking. Hello as well to all of you ladies and gentlemen. I am Bonhomme Chanta, second vice president of Alliance for Democracy in Laos, French chapter. On behalf of the president, Sompet Matanu, I would like to talk right now about the lack of the rule of law in Lao PDR and its consequences because uh, it's a serious concern related on the human rights and the justice. My analysis on those will be in three points. The first, 
corruption, and then drug problem, and finally prostitution and human trafficking. Thus, in the first point, I have to say that the consequences of the lack of the rule of law are primarily felt directly on by the population. The inconsistent prosecution of normal criminal cases as opposed the political cases lead to pronounce corruption in law. This corruption in turn triggers further undesirable development, which I will come to in a moment. Corruption in law begins with minor officials and extends to the highest level of government. According to the Transparency International Index, Lao is currently ranked 134 out of 180. There are also countries in Europe with corruption problems. The difference to Lao, however, is that that is also allowed to be expressed. The critic will be arrest, and those who have committed the corruption will, in the worst case, be praised or transferred to where they can continue to corrupt. But that is by no means all that caused the strand legal interpretation in law and the corruption that goes with it. But the education and health system in law is also a victim of corruption, which is promoted by the lack of the rule of law. In general, both are conceived on the developed that why all European Union gave aid to Lao PDR in order to improve these two sectors. As a matter of interest, the G EU, excuse me, and the country are the four biggest development donors in Lao committing a row. 70 million euro annually in grants. Unfortunately, locals have told us several times how they pay technically bill, school and hospital, and later when the European left again, the entire inventory was sold. Of course, the money did not go to other projects or to the benefit of the community, but to the official wallet. Another serious problem in Laos is still the drug problem. It is my second point. Still on June 27, 2017, the Prime Minister of Lao Tong Lun Sisulit admitted that the illicit drug trafficking and the massive abuse of drug in Lao still constituted the problem and asked for international support. We, human rights activists, know such statements only too well. So far, every new Prime Minister of Laos has announced that he will fight both corruption and drug trafficking, but it's the same, everything. For years, this problem has been downplayed 
by the government and the authority. Now the years of ignorance are avenged by the pro program now rekindling the economy in Laos. The drug police in Laos also seem to be working very inefficiently. Drug addicts have been sent to so-called withdrawal camps where they have been locked up like criminal and subjected to court deprivation. Again and again, it was reported how brutal it is in this camp. Unfortunately, one must also mention in this point that these camps are also financed by foreign aid, such as Germany or the USA. Finally, prostitution and human trafficking. Prostitution is part of everyday life in society. Many adolescents are lured to neighboring Thailand or other countries to work as prostitutes, often under duress. Corrupt officials in the authorities promote this development by providing those affected with late fake, excuse me, paper to allow them to travel abroad. The reason lie in the failed education policy and the lack of future prospects for young people. An estimated number of 600,000 young people have to share this destiny. Most of the slave labor are now in Thailand, but also labor are also in Sri Lanka. One of the biggest examples for slave labor in Laos is the case of Nikom 23, the coffee and rubber plantation under the name Nikom 23 were built as economic unity for the party and government, so-called agricultural unit. But in truth, there are camps for slave labor. The people work in the rice and vegetable field, the profit of production must be handed off to the government. Anyone who does something against it will be arrested and killed for foreigners. It is forbidden to enter the agricultural camp. The Lao population in this area amounts to 60,000 people. And for the people, it is forbidden to travel to Vientiane province. Finally, to conclude, I would say that the legal system in the Lao PDR in no way corresponds to the international standard, nor is it correspond to the principle of the United Human Rights Charter. It must therefore be a journey and fundamentally change. In my opinion, the in the current political context and governance the future of Lao PDR will be less bright. It's really sad and sickening. Thank you. Now to you, Dr. Cooper. Thank you so much, Wan Hong, for sharing the examples of really those rights that are enshrined in the UN Charter, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but really most importantly, in the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, and looking at that importance of the right to health 
also the importance of the right to employment with equality and really highlighting how people are benefiting off of the pain of everyday people. It's everyday people's lives who are destroyed in those statistics that you shared, who are being dragged into drugs, who are being really trafficked to Thailand for prostitution. And it's all those examples of really the futures that are lost and destroyed for people pursuing, really trying to just find enough to be able to feed their families and to be able to survive. And now, of course, we can only throw in that next layer of the COVID crisis and the lack of a government responding to those immediate human rights crises that we now see sweeping across South Asia as well. I now would like to introduce Kampang, who will be able to talk about really some of the larger issues that are even important to the world. As we're looking at the climate crisis, we know what we have to do in less than a decade. We know that the 2030 agenda is so important. And we'll talk about that earlier that we've discussed, but more importantly, get into it later in 2021, because Laos will appear before the UN high level political forum, looking at how they're doing with the important 2030 agenda and the 17 global goals. But first I'd like to introduce Kampong as I share talking about the problems with dams, land grabbing, environmental damage caused by the mine operators. And really the issue that matters to most of us is, of course, is the deforestation in Laos and also how that even undermines uh, the agreements and the pursuit by the European Union, as well as all others when we're having the most latest climate leaders summit that was hosted by President Biden, who will go and do some advocacy with later in this year. But Kampong, can you share about some of the really pursuit by multinational corporations, by corrupt countries in the region and the impacts on people trying to defend their land and also the importance of the issue of protecting their forests. Thank you so much. Mr. Kamban, sure. you are here. Okay. You are muted or there we go. Thank you, Dr. Shua Cooper. My name is Kamban Anonisen, the president of the Alliance for Democracy in Laos, chapter of Canada. I am going to talk about land grabbing, deforestation, and building the dams in Laos. The land grabbing in Laos continues unhindered despite other government commitments. The reason for this are on the on hand many mega projects in the country, but also the re relocation for foreign investors and the establishment of special economic zones. So the government has made soft land leases up to 99 years. The people who resisted this form of land grabbing were mostly arrested or threatened. So now more than 30% of Lao land area in the hand of foreign investors now. By lending the foreign investors the debt of Laos rose to reducing heights. Thus, the debt for construction of an express train run by Chinese investors is $6 million for the special economic zone, Champasak, city of Kong, made by the Hong Kong Investment Corp. The debt amount to $9 billion. Since the foreign investors bring in the same skilled workers for their projects. The effects on the labor market is uh, for Laosians are only small. The examples for land grabs are manifold. In 2017, 14 villagers from Yuk, Sekong province have been arrested for the use of land rights. The families of detainees 
protested against the expropriation of the poverty, property, oh, sorry, for the benefit of a Vietnamese plastic company, plastic company by preventing the company's workers from cutting down the trees. In the meantime, one of the detainees, Mr. Som Sawan, died on January 29, 2018, under circumstances that were not completely clarified. The villagers have resisted the expropriation since 2006. The following has been reported on the evening of 7 August 2011. 25 people were arrested by the authorities in the village of Badanheim after a rally that did not lose their party field to a Vietnamese company that had just surveyed the entire site for a eucalyptus tree plantation. The rice fields of the citizen of Badanyai were also measured. The authorities arrested with, uh, these 25 people and took them to Banasai prison, about 30 kilometers from uh, Saravan city. A little later, 23 people were released. However, two people remained in prison because they were considered leaders. These are Mr. Sifong and Mr. Somnuk. They were accused of being political agitators. According to the information, Mr. Sifong, 55 year old, died on March 7, 2019 in prison. The authorities informed the family 10 days later, saying he died because of his illness, but there was no autopsy. The above mentioned situation was confirmed by the police in the village of Bandanyai, but the police denied the arrest of 25 people, arrest only two people, arrest them not for the land dispute, but for illegal political activities. According to the authorities in the city of Saravan and the deputy district governor, the knowledge about the arrest is denied. At first, they want to learn more about background. In 2019, at least 140 families from eight villages in the Kong district, the southwestern Laos province of Champasak, will be forced to leave their villages to make way for a special economic zone planned for their area. Despite this, developers have begun the hasty construction of an access road that would bring construction traffic dangerously close to some of the villages. The first phase of Mahanathi Sisandon special, special economic zone is expected to be built by 2021 and will cover nearly 2,000, uh, no, 200 hectares of land throughout the six villages. The project will be expanded to cover nearly 10,000 hectares of land in the province, but residents of Ban Han Siu, Ban Pon, Ban Hang Kong, Ban Don Kong, Ban Myung Sen, Ban Pon Chau, Ban Nakop, and Ban Wokok villages have officially refused to give up the land. The district official added that the initial plan of the development will expand to 6,000 hectares, will affect 11 more villages. Next will be de de uh, deforestation. In the past few years, international NCOs have repeatedly reported about illegal logging in Laos. Some time ago, the EIA based in London wrote a particular, uh, particularly revealing report. In the report, an 
in the film published by EIA, it was impressively described how laws to protect forests are circumvented through bribery. The rainforest in Laos is disappeared at an alarm rate. The breathtaking beauty of nature is in great danger today. Independent experts fear that there will soon be no more rainforest in Laos. Not only EIA, but also global witness has been investigated in recent years. It was particularly noticeable in the investigation that almost exclusively Vietnamese company are involved in the deforestation in which is concentrated in the area in the south of Laos and the north of Cambodia. The evidence of the forest uh, deforestation it can be easily followed from satellite images. The companies of Vietnamese HAGL group are primarily responsible for the over exploitation. The Vietnamese were given generous land concessions on the ground that Vietnam had given Laos armed aid in fight against the French and in the USA, and that Laos was now obliged to pay something back to Vietnam. With a large uh, number of sorry, subsidiaries, the HAGL group digs tropical timber in large quantities and replaces the rainforest part with rubber and banana plantation. Wherever the rainforest is not being replaced by monocultures, the HGALG group operates mining or destroys the environment with large dams. One of the most important donors of the, of, of the project is Dutch Bank in Germany. Next, building the dams in Laos. The current problem in Laos is the problem that have arisen with the dams. Although China has already put many dams into operation on the upper reaches of Mekong, the Laotian PDR does not want to stop its project, despite they expected to ecological damage. Currently, 73 dams have been completed in Laos, and a total of 100 dams should be completed by the turn of the year 2020 and 2021. The total of all dams on the Mekong and its effluents should be 300 in the next few years. The government is pursuing the self-stated goal of becoming the battery of Southeast Asia. However, Thailand, which is the main consumer of the electricity, has announced that it does not want to obtain any additional electricity data. So the sense of these projects is in question. The fish stocks in the region are severely decimated by the countless dams. The water table is messed up and the forest deforestation and flooding caused by the dams destroy the rest of the of what was left intact in, 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 in nature. In some places, the water level of Mekong has already dropped by 10 meters. The damage, of, to, the damage to environment has been shown by both the dam bust and the flood disasters in recent years. On July 23rd, 200, 
2018, the Sapien Namnoi Dam, which was under construction, collapsed in Champasak province. We consume that this last dam disaster alone caused more than 1,100 deaths. The government tried to play down the disaster by speaking of only 40 deaths and 98 missing. The fact is, however, that the people who lost many thousands of their homes, though this, this disaster and have been living in emergency shelters ever since. The foreign and payment, uh, aid, the foreign aid payment to these disasters were only partially paid out to those who need in need. Most of the money was used for other projects or was collected by corrupt officials. If the dam breaches were bad enough, several flood disasters followed because of the water level that had gotten mixed up by the dams. Flooding has affected the lives of 572,000 people and caused considerable damage to buildings and, homeland and farmland. According to the estimates by the Asian Coordinating Center, uh, Center of Humanitarian Assistance, here to the same thing was repeatedly in helping the victims, the victims as in the previous dam breaches. But it gets worse since there are not enough donors in Laos for these dam projects. These dams were financed with debts from Big Brother China. Since the government of Laos can no longer pay these debts as expected, the main, uh, the main Chinese investors China's Southern Power Grid Company get the majority of shares. The Electricité du Laos Transmission Company, the debt that Laos has toward China, meanwhile, correspond to 40% of the GDP. So Laos has already become a colony of China economically. The dam project has thus lost all sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kanban. So uh, let, let us summarize a little bit uh, loud to let latest uh, speeches. We have seen there are many, many differences between uh, the European standard of law and the Laotian standard of law. We have uh, one difference between law and constitution. Uh, Bunton has explained to us, Mr. Saxadi has explained there is a big difference between international law standard in Europe and uh, in Laos. In Europe, it's much more further and uh, much more higher than in Laos. Mr. Bun Hom has uh, explained to us that uh, we have effects of the lack of rule of law in Laos. There's corruption, drug problems, prostitution, human trafficking on the one hand, and on the other hand, political prisoners uh, have been punished in a hard time. Mr. Kanban has explained to Ed that there are a lot of consequences of different legal treatment in Laos, uh, and uh, especially with the drum, uh, dam problems and the environment problems. But we don't want to speak only about problems, we want to speak about solutions. And we have a plan. And Mrs. Kampen from United States, she will explain to us a little bit more on the solutions. Ms. Kampen, you have the floor. Thank you, Marcus. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kampen Suvanathan. I am the president of the Alliance for Democracy in Laos, chapter of USA. Today, I will be speaking of some of the solutions to most of the problems in Laos. Actually, the solution to all problems in Laos is very simple. Laos must 
change to a European style democracy with multi party systems. However, I would like to be more specific and explain in detail what everything has to be done. In the case of Sombat Somporn disappearance, an international investigation for the has still not been approved and is urgently required. Decree 327 significantly worsened the restriction of the freedom of speech, press, and assembly. The restriction for NGO were also pushed forward by Decree 238. An example of this is the case of Philip of Yuk in 2017, where 14 people were arrested for standing up for their land rights and addressing the public. One of the arrests died in detention. 10 other people are still in prison. Another case is the case of three migrant workers. Some Pon Kimason, Lord Tamawong, Sukan Jaitat, who have been in prison since 2016 due to the criticism on the internet and demonstration in front of the Lao Embassy in Thailand. The arrest of Ms. Wai Hyung Sanyak Buli on September 12, 2019 is also the evidence of this. Ms. Sanyak Buli was sentenced to five years in prison for daring ask the government for help in the victims of the flood disaster. The land grab in Laos continued to increase more and more mega projects, special economic zones, mine projects, and dam construction have caused further land grabbing from the population. 100 dams projects, dams are to be completed this year, and the number is expected to increase to 300 in the next few years. All of this happened regardless of the livelihood of people that is taken away from them or the ecological consequences. None of these projects serve to develop the country. They only serve corruption in all level of the Laotian administration. The population no longer has any right in their own country, but the investors and workers who come with them have all rights in the country to control. With this policy of this non-surgical project, the Laotian become a minority of their own country. Clear, transparent, and de democratic controls on the fight against corruption. The fight against corruption must be carried out by independent institutions and must not be influenced by the state. International control by the UN in the fight against drug crime and illegal prostitution. All projects for the rehabilitation of former drug users and drop out from the prostitution swamp. Approval of international independent aid organizations to help drug addicts and illegal prostitutes. The problem of rural poverty, the lack of income opportunity, the poor education and training, and the youth unemployment should be incorporated as key priority in the national development policy. Meanwhile, the Laos government to take measures to clamp down on the official corruption related to human trafficking. A Lao Thai task force should be formed to identify the extent and scope of the problem and identify the elements of the comprehensive plan to combat human trafficking. The expertise of ILO and UNICEF should be engaged. 
the Laos PDR needs sustainable regional planning for building schools to enforce compulsory education. The Youth Welfare Office must provide information and, if necessary, take action. In the long term, more need to be done to improve the social situation of the population, giving family the opportunity to send all children to school. The implementation of new law need to be monitored more closely. The fight against corruption must be more consistent. The social situation of the family has to be straightened so that the forced marriage are not necessary. The constitution need to be amended in Article 3. Other party and organization must be admitted. The policy for admission of political organization should be governed by the United Nations Convention on the Human Rights. This can be supplemented by own guidelines, provided they do not restrict the UN Declaration. The friendship agreement between Vietnam and Laos must be reconsidered in the Communist Party and reassess for its pros and cons. Afterward, we recommend that a expiration of the contract with the year 2022. Freedom of expression and participation in the political process are elements of the UN Convention in the Human Rights signed by the government of Laos. This must now be implemented in reality. Every person can be, can and must get this human right. It is not enough to enshrine this is a law. It also has to be implemented in reality. The enforceability of human rights in Laos must be guaranteed. For this, country needs profound reform in all institutions only through independent separation of powers, which is also implemented in reality, sustainable development is possible. Property rights must be clarified and implemented. A public city assisted commission for the clarification of ownership must be used. Public or state ownership must also be subject to greater public security. However, seen corruption also play a majority role in these cases. Public inspection must be carried out in order to prevent them. The massive exploration and resettlement of the civil civilian population are to be stopped immediately, as this has also led to indirect ethnic cleansing. If one if one spoke of 68 ethnic group in 1975, only 49 are mentioned today. An exact clarification of these circumstances is urgently needed. The welfare state need to be strengthened. The basic security of the population must be ensured. A social security system that is supposed by all must be introduced Seriously, the denial of medical treatment, hospital treatment, lack of insurance and poverty is unjustifiable, especially in the Communist Party country, and may need to be enforced through statutory action under the auspice of the World Health Organization. The right to education must not just be on paper. The right to education must be also been opposed by the application of the state and society to enforce it. It takes more than just legal templates to enforce this. Comprehensive regional planning covering the location and accessibility of school must be carried out nationwide. 
state expropriation of the population must be avoided, especially in traditional settlements. Public control related projects essential, likewise as described in Article 6, a clarification of property rights must be made. An opportunity to sue for the International Court of Human Rights is required if conditions do not change in the shortest possible time. The property right guaranteed by Article 16 of the Laotian Constitution are too unspecific and need to be amended by more specific wording and legislation. Decree 238 on the work of NGOs must be overturned. The NGO law needs to be redone so that the NGO are free and able to move independently according to international standards. Laos need free election without restriction from the state or a party for a candidate restriction the freedom of association must be lived and replaced by a new law. The preference of the party cadre must be ended. All people are equal. No one is allowed to be above the law. To do this, Laos need an independent judiciary and independent separation of powers. The strong interpretation of the state on the central government prevent adequate protection of ethnic groups and minorities. Therefore, a stronger regional policy must be implemented. This can only be guaranteed in a federal system. Cultural policy must be in the hand of the regional policy. It should be noted that the structures are not to be bureaucratic. This can be avoided by clear constitutional rule of jurisdiction. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Kampen. Bunton, you want to speak some closing words to us? Yes, uh, I would like to speak about a problem uh, between the dictatorship system in ASEAN and uh, democratic system in Europe. We, the people in ASEAN, especially in Laos, we need change for democracy in our country. We need pressure from the whole world to um, for them problems from China, from neighbor country, how can we stop it? This need for international organization like NGO, UN and EU. Thank you. <laughs> Joshua. Thank you so much, Buntong, and thank our panel as well. And when we discuss these issues, we don't want to really end with what is the situation, but plan what we can do next. And I wanna thank our final speaker because she really brought up that this is historical human rights harm. And we can really look at rule of law and the standards that exist and the persistent violation of those rights. She raised the point about Sombat Sompon and the case of enforced disappearances. And we wish that was the only case, but unfortunately we can see this is a practice that has existed since the establishment of the nation. We can see that with Tubi Lifong, a Hmong leader who was working the same way that Sombat Sompon was working decades later he is actually still a case of an enforced disappearance. We can't close his case because the people, his family have not been able to receive his ancestral remains so they could have a cultural ceremony to begin to conclude that phase of their life. And we see with the case of Sombat Sompon in the case 
of some of the human rights instruments that was just shared by our final speaker, that the government is not giving a genuine, really even a heartfelt approach to solve the situation, but coming up with more propaganda and trying to disparage the name of Sombat Sambon, but also even his partner who's fought perilously to make sure that his case remained alive and in the hearts and minds of people around the world. So we see, unfortunately, a negative trend that since 75, all the way up until the present, the government is persistently actually doing nothing to address these problems. And unfortunately, we see the EU, we see the UN politely trying to nudge, but we think we have to move beyond the moral authority to actually make sure that we uphold international human rights standards. We can see there's a rising trend among authoritarian regimes in Asia, but also in the West. We now have a global movement for democracy that we must all stand up together to demand a better future for all. And as we can see with the pandemic, we're all in this together. And so the next place that we should organize together moving forward is really looking at the high level political forum that will take place from June, July 6th through July 15th under the auspices of the Economic and Social Council. And there will be a high level segment of the council and the theme there will be sustainable and resilient recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic that promotes the economic, social and environmental dimensions of sustainable development, building an inclusive and effective path for the achievement of the 2030 agenda in the context of the decade of action and delivery for sustainable development. So what we can look at and what we should do in this voluntary national review of Laos is concentrate on these goals. Number one, no poverty. Two, zero hunger. Three, good health and well-being. Eight, decent work and economic growth. 10, reducing inequalities. 12, responsible consumption. 16, peace, justice, and strong institution. And 17, partnership. Those are the goals that they'll be looking at, and that's what we should do. And what's exciting is as I look back at the speakers that we have sharing with you from around the world, that's exactly what we're looking at. One, two, three, eight, 10, 12, 16, and 17. And we know that these goals are really human rights. They're focusing on economic, social, and cultural rights, fair economy, looking at human rights, and looking at the path forward in partnership, that these are all indivisible and interlinked. And we hope that you will join us moving forward. And that's why it's such an honor to be here with the AEPF and for the first time for the Alliance for Democracy in Laos and Hawaii Institute for Human Rights to be participating with you to juxtapose this journey for justice between Europe and ASEAN and know that we are really in this together. The only way we'll be able to have a culture of peace and human rights and justice around the world is we're able to organize at this regional level. And it was brought up earlier about the situation in ASEAN having a non-interference, but we can see that with Myanmar, that it's even forcing it to change in a way some of its core documents because human rights are that important. And we must all stand together in solidarity because we know that's the only way we'll be able to achieve truth, justice, democracy, and human rights for all. I'll now hand it over to Marcus. Thank you so much for being with us today at AEPF 2021. Yes, thank you, Joshua, for your closing words. It was wonderful. It was very wonderful uh, to be with you all here, folks. We have learned many, many things today. We have learned many things about problems, but we have also learned uh, about uh, solutions for problems. And uh, for me in person, I think there's one difference in this world. There is no perfect country in this world, but there is one very important difference between countries. There are some countries you can say it, and there are some countries you can say it not. And that is the main difference. In Europe, I can criticize everything. I can criticize the constitution, the rule of law, the politicians, the parties, yeah, the state institutions. In Laos, I can. It is prohibited. Many people 
have to go into prison when they do it. Uh, there are many, many cases we have heard today about it, the, uh, as an example, the Facebook bloggers and so on. But we will go on. And we are still working the Alliance for Democracy in Laos as a network. Not only a network between different NGOs, we do. We are a global network. And the Lao community in the whole world, they have learned so many things, what is going on in this world, and how different systems of democracy can work in the United States, in Canada, in New Zealand, in Australia, Germany, France, Switzerland. We have members in uh, Spain, in Great Britain, Italy, Belgium, and many, many more. And all these people, they see the advantages and the disadvantages of the system, and they've learned. And my call for the people in Laos is, Let's put us together to learning from each other, learning how it can go on, how we can do better. Now we have more than four decades of communistic party power in Laos. And I think now it is time for a change. It is time for a change for better politics. It is time to learn from each other, to speak with each other. We don't want to have a revolution. We want to have an evolution. This evolution must go on. Standing still for a country, this means the death. This is the end of the country. But going on, develop the country. This is the future for every country. You see in the European countries, all the countries move on. All the countries develop and go on. And so this is why they will survive for every time. And so this is why they are very, very high developed, because they are always able for a change and for development. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I saw many chats today. Okay, I have answered. I, I hope I can. Uh, I was able to answer all the people who have chatted directly to me <laughs> during this meeting. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, folks. Sokdi, Sawadi, have a nice day.